recording and looks like the man of the hour is hopping on. So um, I want to thank everybody who's catching this uh, live and on the replay. We are, this is a very special event and the title of today's training is called Optimizing You for Success in the New Normal. And that's just a really fancy tagline to you know, talk about uh, optimizing yourself and, and being the best version of yourself. And our guest today is, is Phil Tal. And um, those of you guys who were here live uh, before we started the recording, you guys heard a little bit about him. And I, I think the best way to just kind of, so you guys can get it is just to talk about some of the things that other people have said about him. And so uh, Dick Vermeil, he's one of the most famous coaches in NFL history. Uh, I believe he was a you know big broadcaster. He said, Phil has not only helped rehone my leadership skills, but also helped me deal with my personal hangups. He's a winner. Um, and Dick uh, was actually the Super Bowl champion when he was coaching the Rams. Uh, I think one of the, the coolest lines um, actually came from Kirk Hammett uh, from Metallica. He said, if Lennon and McCartney had Phil, the Beatles would never have broken up. And Phil actually worked really <laughs> closely with Metallica, uh, he works really closely with Rascal Flatts and, and just a, a lot of other high quality, or just the, the best performers in their industry, uh, not only celebrity and musicians, but also, um, you know, high level performers in, in various fields. And he's just, um, I, I, I don't know, I've never really met um, someone like Phil who's able to really just pierce into your your soul and your situation and your, you know, he's really able to, to just find the true essence of, of who you are. And uh, he's able to do it in a, in, in a very short time, you know? And so mm-hmm. um, those of you guys who are here on this call, like I said, you guys are in for a real treat. Um, I'd encourage you to turn on your videos, um, you know, let us see your, your smiling faces. And I'd imagine I'm going to ask Phil to kind of share a little bit about his journey and kind of how he got here. But I'd imagine that uh, we're going to open it up for, for the, the people on the call to kind of talk about where you're at and, and have Phil guide you uh, through some of those things. Because as we mentioned, he's, you know, he works best, um, you know, one-on-one. So welcome, Phil. You, you, look, uh, you look three years younger than when I met you. I don't know how you do it, but you're looking great. Um, thanks for joining us this morning. I appreciate you working with all the hangups that come along with, uh, with being with me and Tim. I think we've got Mickey Mouse Phil again. (laughs) Phil, what? (laughs) (laughs) That's uh, Phil's typical intro routine. Uh, He does, uh, we had that last time. I don't know what happened, but I'm sure he'll be back in a few minutes um, or a minute or so. So, (laughs) Tim, why don't you, as we're kind of filling some space here, why don't you talk about what you and Phil have worked on um, and, you know, uh, maybe you just talk about that, what that journey has been like for you. I, I can compare it to the uh, part with uh, Dick Vermeil because, you know, I'm trying to lead this community. I'm one of the founders and leaders of GoBundance. So, so, you know, I'm trying to be a part of excellent teams that uh, win championships year after year or a, or a band that stays together and really enjoys the ride along the way and put puts out hit after hit of uh, you know winning music or comedy or whatever the the whatever it is that you're trying to do just how do the best of the best do that so I call Phil my general manager and he really helps me. Um, sh- state for for everything that i that i'm trying to do and and the funny thing with uh dick vermeil when he said how he helped him not only win championships but get over his personal hang-ups that's where he's you know he's just been invaluable with helping me go deep and you know um heal those old, old wounds that we all have so uh, I'm hoping his sound is back. That kind of gives you a piece of the work that, that Phil and I are working on. Yeah. Well, I'd love to do some housekeeping here. Um, I, I started updating some people's names. We actually have a few special guests on our call here. We have a, um, 
there's a new program that's been going on with One Life, uh, kind of in the background, and some of our, our family members have been taking part of it. So we have two One Life guides. I think we have two. Uh, I might be at one that I'm missing, but um, Miss Janice Burt and Mr. B, they uh, officially completed their their certification program and are, are now um, certified One Life guides. And so they're going to be they're now armed with the the One Life roadmap and have the the tools and the trainings to go out and take what, a lot of what we talk about and what's in the journal and what we do in our experiences and are, and are now certified to go out and bring those into all of the different places that they're working with. So schools and uh, rehabilitation centers and um, uh, rehab centers and prisons and all these different places. And, and, and Janice and, and Mr. B are, are two of the first people to um, take up that sword and are, and are now you know, on, the, on the fight with us, helping to, to spread um, spread the one life mission. And so I just want to give you guys a, a quick little props and, and, and some, you know, virtual round of applause here and a big thanks for, for doing that and being uh, one of the first to, to go through that process. I know that that was a, a big thing for us. Yeah. Yeah. They went through our beta course, which just ended. And Janice, what, what did you get out of it? I, I will be back on with Phil in a sec, but uh, what'd you get out of it? And Hector, do you want to um, try and see if you can help him? Um, do you have his uh, text information? I'll, I'll figure it out. Um, Janice, why don't you share a little bit about, and, and Mr. B, maybe um, you can chime in too with what you guys got out of the program. Um, well, I will just say it was amazing. It was so cool to have that course set up and just the interaction um, between all of us that were taking it for the first time. And uh, we got, when we had to do our final evaluation, we got to partner up with, with people. And that was the coolest part because it really life community. And I think if we find each other's strengths and then, you know, just, um, <laughs> bounce things off of each other and present things together. It's, it was just so, so cool. So I highly recommend it to everybody to take it. Um, it it's definitely goes more in depth into the core four, the fulfillment triangle and just how we can present to other people. So a lot of facilitation tools and I think Mr. B, Mr. B was awesome. So neat to get to know him more. A lot yeah, of you well, know him, DJB. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, um, I can I can honestly say this is a program that's that's perfect for all walks of life. Um, with with me going through certain personal struggles at this time, it was it was a full one eighty for me. Um, so because I'm experiencing what I'm experiencing from it, I can really go through because um, the people that, that there's people that's on the higher spectrum who are doing well, who have the incomes and all that stuff. And there's the people who are not having the incomes. And um, I can relate to both sides because, you know, I own my own businesses before. And now where I am, I can totally relate. And it, it was a total 180 for me. So, oh my gosh, I have so much to share with people and, um, you know, it's, it's going to be awesome. I, I can't wait. I can't wait to share how it has changed my life and, and put me on the right path. So looking forward to doing that in the future. Yeah, it's um, as, as One Life has grown, we've had so many people come to us and ask, you know, how they can support and how they can help bring the One Life roadmap and its teachings into all of the places that impact them the most, you know, the, 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 the uh, school systems that their kids go to, the, um, you know, we have seen so many people in the One Life community who have been part of uh, kind of the, the justice and the judicial reform system and, and, and impacted by some of these rehabilitation centers and incarceration centers. And so all, all the places that need One Life most. And so there's obviously a, a, a great opportunity to bring it to those people. But we also have a lot of people who are, now kind of scratching and clawing and looking for their their pivot and they're looking for their their new opportunity in this normal and one life has been building uh you know a solid foundation and, and a ton of 
assets and intellectual property and teachings and, and you know, all these resources uh, to be able to help people who just want to go out there and, and share that message. And so it's also become uh, an income opportunity and an income source for some of our guides as well. So if you guys are, are interested, um, you guys can, uh, in, in seeing or, or joining our next one is, is in June. It's, uh, you can go to onelifefullylive.org slash certification and there's, uh, there's some more information on there as well. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about, I, it looks like uh, we're in communication with, uh, with him and, and he's trying to hop back on. So I, I wouldn't hang in there, y'all. He's implore worth it. Your, your patience because I promise it'll, it'll be worth it. What's it's funny good. is every now and then our calls kind of go like this, a little sideways and takes a little, we're both, you know, senior grayish and, and takes a little while to get things together. But every time I'm ever on with this man, I just come away feeling... I, he makes me feel more whole. You know what I mean? And think of that for those you seek to lead um, is, is how do you make them feel more whole? Isn't that a, you know, isn't that a beautiful thought? And whenever I talk to him, I just feel so good because he looks for the good. And I think that's just, just watch this trait in him is is he's just always helping you focus you know um look at your weak sides look at the things that are out there don't sugarcoat stuff because that doesn't do any good whatsoever but um find the good in you that can overcome that and if you think about that that kind of ties into the whole appreciative inquiry methodology of it's not a SWOT analysis of where are my problems. It's, it's focusing on what's good and running with that. So anyway, that, that it does seem to be his coaching style. So, and, and you can tell at this point we're stalling. So all of you who um, know us really well, I'm going to ask you to please um, forgive me for a sec, but I'm going to go to the one life basics and just talk about, um, and Hector, while we're waiting, if you could put up the fulfillment triangle and the core four, and we'd love for you guys to know what we're talking about and what is One Life all about. And, and it took us a while. One Life's been around for 10 years and we, you know, dream it, plan it, live it. We always have this thought processes of what it's all about. But just in the last year, we've really focused in on helping um, humanity figure out how they can have and listen to these words their most joyous and fulfilling life and think of where humanity is now they're so far from that you guys we need something different and we think we have the answer and that's why we want you to help us spread this all over is it's based on two concepts number one is the fulfillment triangle and that is, look at this triangle. Where do my passions meet my talents where there's opportunity? Think about that. What do I love to do? I'm good at it and I can make money doing it. Wow, what a concept. Shouldn't that be taught in schools? Isn't that freaking basic? What do I love to do? What am I good at? And I can make money doing it. This is what... You know, this is the thought process. Where can I fit in and thrive? So this is the it. And then the how is the core four. And that's vision. Where am I going with all this? Finances. How can I fund relationships? Who's along for the ride? And wellness. How can I be healthy in my mind, body, and spirit to holistically crush this amazing life I've been blessed to live? So those are our basic one-two punch of the fulfillment triangle and the One Life core four. And that makes up our One Life Roadmap teachings. And if you go to onelifefullylived.org or check out our One Life Fully Lived Roadmap journal on Amazon, you can see where we can take you deep into our where will I fit in and thrive? And how can I make that happen? One, two punch teachings. So there's our commercial. Hector, is he any closer to being on?
you're muted, H. Hector, you're muted. So I think you can hear me now. Um, one of the things that he asked about was, uh, and I mentioned he's probably going to have someone share as soon as he gets on, um, is how have you grown yourself because of COVID? And so in, in relation to the fulfillment triangle and the core four, you know, I, I'd encourage you to really reflect on, on these things and, and if they've changed or if they've become more, more important or, or, or which ones, um, you know, which ones have become more important. I think that, you know, personally with all this, I don't want to say all this time, but with the, with the time that we have, you know, at, at the early onset of, of quarantine and lockdown and this whole, this whole time, uh, I felt myself, you know, going in a, into a downward spiral and, and thankfully having this community around, you know, we started to, take steps in the right direction. So I started working out more and we started, you know, getting out in nature and hiking as much as we could. And just those little decisions and those little things that uh, come from just looking at this, you know, looking at this picture and, and trying to figure out where, you know, what, what needs attention. And so um, I think that that was, was for me uh, a big part of, of, of this whole journey um, and going through it with one life. So um, it does not look <laughs> like Phil is on quite yet. So I'd love for, um, I'd love to take this moment. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to, um, use this as an oppor opportunity to, to, uh, just connect. And so, um, one of the things that have, has emerged from some of these things is the ability to connect with other people in the One Life community. So in just a few minutes, I'm going to give you guys an opportunity. We're going to hop into some breakout rooms. Some of you guys have done this with the One Life community. Some of you guys have done this with other uh, you know, communities, but we're going to hop into some breakout rooms and just give you guys a chance to connect and talk about. And um, if you guys could, if you guys are taking notes, um, you know, if you guys could share your, wherever you're taking notes on or whatever you're taking notes on, or I'm also, you know, I know you can take notes on your phone. So wherever you're going to write it down, I'd love for you to just jot down, you know, an, an idea, some thoughts, about what's most important for you right now, right? I mean, the question that, that Phil had was, how have you grown yourselves because of COVID? Um, how have you, you know, and, and specifically what part of the, of the core four um, is lacking or what part of the core four needs attention? But I'm, I'm just curious, which, which of those core four stood out to you uh, as Tim was talking about it? So we're gonna have um, just a few minutes Maybe, maybe three to four. It looks like uh, he's just having a link issue. So he should be back in a few minutes. So we'll probably have less than five minutes. So th there'll be about four, three or four people in there. Let's just go round robin. Each person can share really quickly what, um, you know, what came up for them. And then uh, we'll hop back in a few minutes. And uh, by then he should, be, uh, he should be ready to go. So if you guys have not done this before, you guys are in for a treat. And uh, if you have, then please um, step up and, and help people who have, this is their first time. So it should be taking you guys to a room um, in just a few seconds. All right. Clarence, I don't know if it if it let you in. Uh, I'm gonna. There you go. Hello. So. Oh All right, guys, we are back, and the 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 guest of honor is here, and and the universe is smiling on us, and has decided to uh, to shine its light upon us. So, um, we had a. How'd you guys share? I'd, I'd love to just, you know, Phil, maybe you want to take it over. Um, usually at this point, we kind of go around and share what was in there, but maybe you have a, a better question to throw out to people. But um, I would love, Hector, I would love to, first of all, everybody, um, disregard that overwhelming intro from Hector, which actually blew the circuits on my computer so that I was unable to get back in. So I, I resourcefully turned to my wife's iPad, which is also a dangerous thing for me to do, to steal her iPad. But, but I'm back on now, and I would really like to hear from you all about what, you're, you know, what you thought about in the breakout sessions. 
and let's take some, let's work with, with your questions and your thoughts, not just your questions. Does anyone want to take the floor, uh, unmute themselves and share? Go, whoever can get there fastest. Okay. Joe, you're, in, you're up. Okay, so, uh, well, thanks everybody for being here. Um, so in, in our group, unfortunately, Juliana didn't get to talk a whole lot. Uh, Carter and I kind of uh, took over the conversation, but we were all thinking about how we've had the time and the ability to focus on our physical and emotional health during this time, um, hyper-focused because we have to stay healthy during so that we're not susceptible to uh, catching this virus. And one of the things that I mentioned is I le really learned to be alone uh, and be okay with it and keep myself entertained and happy and, and organized and, uh, and fulfilled. And um, it's just me and my dog who's at the groomer right now, so it's just me today. So it's really, really alone. But uh, thanks for thanks for uh, being here, Phil. We appreciate it. That was a nice summary, really. Thank you. Um, look, I want to get on the whole. Can I see the whole screen now? How do I do this on my wife's iPad? Anybody help me with that? How do I, I see the swipe. whole? I think you swipe to the side. Swipe to the side. Yeah, my. You know, Phil, to my right? my two year old. He's learning how to swipe right now. Yeah, well, thank you very much. I appreciate that, Hector. That's all I need now. No, I'm talking about. I know how to swipe, but I think you can. I, I think you can the see all. I know I'm not on the Zoom though. I'm only on the one person in, thing. In the upper right hand corner, there should be a little grid. That yeah, you I see it. And if you click, if you touch that, it should say grid view, and then you'll see everybody. Well, it says, I, okay, I'm on the right hand side. It says stop video, share content, participants, more. That's what it says. More. Thank you. Now it says chat, meeting settings, virtual background, raise hand, disconnect audio. That's um, not it. It's different okay. than on the iPad. Okay, so participants, maybe that? That'll just give no, you a no, no, it doesn't, doesn't no, okay. Are you Share content, no. Stop video, mute. I'm, oh, wait a minute. Gallery, switch to gallery. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Hey. Thank you, everybody, for being so patient. What can I tell you? Thank you. So, continue on with the with uh, the comments. Who was it just that just spoke? I've forgotten. That was Joe. Joseph. Joe Price. Nice. Joe, nice going, Joe. Thank you very much. So, so um, who else? Would, what else? Let's let's start talking about it. Joe talked about how what he's learned from from COVID, and I I will say this about COVID from my perspective, uh, I don't think it was I don't think that some um, higher spirit uh, blessed us with COVID, but I do think that there is that it's our job as human beings to see the high the higher power picture and to and to think okay so what is this gift if we're going to live one life fully lived, then we live one crisis fully lived too. So, I mean, that is our experience. You know, our, our commitment is to be fully engaged which, with whatever's in front of us at any, at any time. So I'm really excited about hearing how some of you have, what you've learned about yourself during I, this time. You know, I, I'd like to make an observation and I think it might open up the conversation is um, what, the, what, what this has opened up for me is the importance of balancing your head and your heart and, and, you know, jumping out there and getting after it versus the patience of, you know, just observing and seeing what's going on in that delicate dance of life and how important that is. And I, and I just want to go back when I was, you know, in my twenties and thirties and just getting after it and stuff. I was all in my head and I was successful, but what Phil's helped me so much with and, and other coaches and stuff and patients and years is, is balancing that delicate blend of head versus heart. So if you're on this call and if you're more of a hard charger, get shit done person, you know, how can you chill more? And if you are more introverted, scared bunker mentality, how can you, um, 
you know, I, I overcome your fears and your feelings and do the things you need to do to, you know, step up and live your one life fully lived. And how do you balance that? What are your thoughts on that, Phil? Well, I first thought, did you say the word patience in there, Timmy? Yeah. Because I've never, I've, I've never heard patience come out of you at all. But, but, but I really like what you, but I really like what you said. That was very um, ministerial and, 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 and very prophetic, I think, and, and profound. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I like, I like the idea of what we, who we aren't, who, who we bring into COVID, right? And what we're comfortable with, and then breaking out of that comfort, which is what you're saying. So if you're one side of the equation, to, to move in the other direction, right? Isn't that what you're saying? You, right. And I, and I like, I mean, obviously, if we aren't operating from head and heart simultaneously, then the universe doesn't get all of us. Right. If we're not, the yeah, 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 totally, totally. And, and... I think there's, you know, just naturally people gravitate, you know, some are more head centered and some are more heart centered. And uh, I think it's good to work on your weak side. And, uh, you know, and that's the journey I've been on. I've always had the head side, the, the patience you joked about. That's, that's always been there. I've never had patience. Well, I have more than I've ever had. But Hector, am I patient now? More, a lot more than, than when we started, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you can't, you can't, um, you can't lead a movement and be patient. Number one, and number two, you can't right. lead a movement and not. Um, how can I put this? Adjust to your team speed and allow the universe to to everything to. You know, you've got, that's the dance I'm talking about. You know? Yeah, I like that to me. I, I don't, I think that, look, I think that you have to have, you have to move, if you're, if you're involved in a cause like you guys are, an incredible uh, transformative cause that's individual and collective, uh, that is reaching out and touching so many people and involving so many people, you have to move in the rhythm of the, of the collective. So there is a certain amount of patience that has to be that's required. You know, we, we can't move we can't move too slowly. It's sort of like riding a wave, right? It's sort of like mm. if you get out too far in front of a wave, you get thrashed. Mm. If you are too far back on the wave, you miss the wave. Yeah. Wow. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. It's it's that it's a flow state. And yeah. and great bands have that. Great teams have that. The Warriors were in a flow state for like three years, you know? So. Don't talk to me about the Warriors. I'm a Lakers fan, diehard Lakers fan. So oh. I, don't want to, I don't want to hear anything about that. Oh, I got to love that. The Warriors were in a flow state, and the, the Warriors, um, uh, and then they sabotaged that, you know, in some ways. And I think what we have to watch for always, we have to, while we're living our life fully, we have to monitor ourselves and not get complacent and not uh, pretend to feel like we have the answers for tomorrow by doing what we were doing yesterday. And it's very, very difficult for success for successful people and success or, or times when we've all been successful is that's the time. It's very, very difficult to maintain that. Right? So what I think we do sometimes out of a subconscious fear is we, we anticipate, uh, we, we, we're, we are afraid to, we, we, we hold on to what's working now. And I think one of the great things about COVID is that it, it pulled the rug out from under all of us and forces us now to reset. Mm -hmm. how, are you some, how are some of you resetting? So can I, can I? Amy, Amy please hop in, yeah. Um, well, so I want to touch back on the first thing you said, which was that you didn't believe that, that there's some like benevolent God that blessed us with this. Um, because I personally, I think that's exactly what happened. Um, I think everything in our life is a blessing if we allow it to be. And I think that when you are struck with something that looks like a crisis 
or feels very negative and heavy, if you treat it like a blessing, it becomes a blessing for you, right? And so the, the question really is, is how, how can this be a blessing in my life? And, and there's, there's been so many, like I've had a lot more time for work. I've always worked out a lot, but, but now I've had more time as I'm commuting less, um, becoming friendlier with, like we're all getting to know Zoom better. So many, I don't think I would have been introduced to this She freezing or am I? She's Let's freezing. Just say, no, 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 no. Oh, I'm freezing. Oh, yeah, wow. Do sorry. Your screen. No, it was beautiful. Do your screen and you could you're, see. No, now you're back, Amy. We got you. Back? Yeah. And Amy, you were on a roll. You were, you were, you were exceptional. So can you just go over the last part? And just the, rather than, because I, rather than treating it like a crisis and looking for the good within it, Treat it like the whole thing is a blessing. It just showed up kind of like in a Halloween costume. <laughs> <laughs> no. Halloween no, costume of, was called Crisis. No, kind of like you just showed up. Oh. That was so beautiful. Nice work. Thank you. Mm. That's beautiful. Yeah. Great perspective. You know, Think about the fact that we're all together. I always believe this, that, that any can, anytime anybody's in front of me at any moment, that's the moment, that's the, there's, there's divine intervention. Think about how all of us are together today and how, how wonderful that is, how, what a blessing it is to be here with each other and that there's an underlying purpose. Maybe we can't define it right away, but there's an underlying purpose for us being here. In the in the collection that we are, in the, with the numbers and the people we are. Yeah. And if there is a divine purpose, then we look for that, right, Amy? That's yeah. what we do. Yeah. And because just, it's there. Yeah, and believing that it's there causes you to look for it, which causes you to find it. Yes. As, you know, yes. as opposed to this, oh, ain't it awful, but that, okay, it looks pretty bad, but what if this were for my benefit? Yes. Beautiful. I think it's just, one of the, it's just dressed the way we didn't want it to, to dress. Yeah. I think one of the challenges is, especially when it first came up, is we just didn't know what was going to happen. And just that uncertainty. And it, it, if you think about it, and I don't know, I'm curious for you, Phil, it may have been the most uncertain happening that, that many of us have ever been through. You know, that, that we didn't, I don't know if you guys read that the, there was this thing being passed around on Facebook. If you were born in 1900, all the things you would have been through. I mean, it was amazing. And like I was born in 1959 and really the Vietnam war was right before me. So I hit it, <laughs> you know, from after Vietnam till now, 9-11, you know, there were some other things, but they weren't the Spanish flu. They weren't World War I. They weren't World War II. You know, there's, so it's, it's been a very unsteady thing. And, and I think um, there's, there's some, there's been, and, and what's really interesting, there's been, the disruption hasn't been even at all. Some people haven't been hurt. Some have been blessed and others have been devastated, you know, and that's what's, it's, it's just challenging. What are, what are your thoughts, Phil? Uh, I'd like to hear what, what other people, I think someone with Matt Piper, where is Matt? Was it Matt Piper? Matt was saying something out there. He was chatting and I only got a piece of it. Uh, Matt, what's your, what is your thought? Where are you, Matt? Is there a Matt? There somewhere. Yeah. So just following up on what Amy was saying, um, I, I was rephrasing a question that um, I used to ask myself, and I think other people do too, is why is this happening to me? Um, mm -hmm. And instead, it can be very empowering to ask, how is this for me? How is this working to my benefit? Oh, wow. That's beautiful. Beautiful thought, Matt Piper. Yeah. Does, does anybody have any questions for Phil or anything you'd love to run by him? We don't want this to just be a, you know, you can do a positive fest 
Um, and, and that's a great mindset to have. Don't get me wrong. And it, and it's how, um, our minds think, but there are a lot of Tim, Timmy got frozen, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Today is, uh, the, the good technology day or maybe zoom is just yeah, being yeah. overloaded. Yeah. yeah um, I'm sure that's the case. Go ahead. I'd love to just keep throwing it or, you know, throw it out to the floor. Um, if, if someone has a, a question that's come up, Ms. Mr. B, why don't, why don't you, uh, why don't you take Okay. So what I've found is that a lot of things sound great in theory. Um, there's a lot of things we know, we know, like we know, like we know, like wake up every day with gratitude. We know all, we know all the right things, but how do we actually apply the things that we know to be true? Give us an example, Mr. B. What, what well, are you struggling um, with? Uh, well, for me right now, currently, it's, it's, it's getting my business going to the point of, of with marketing and um, getting the word out there with, with my business is that I'm, that I'm, it's kind of like in the ground stages because this, this COVID situation has kind of leveled the playing field a little bit. Um, so it's, we're a little bit starting over and I find myself back down at the ground level trying to build the businesses up or the ideas that I have up. Um, and I, you read the books and you can relate to all the things that you read about, you know, the rich dad, poor dad, and, and all these different um, methods and even groups like this where you hear things and like, I, 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 that's one that I believe where it says, instead of why is this happening to me, try asking how is it happening for me? And you still feel good, but you're not getting to that point of, forward motion. You seem to be still stagnant, even though you feel good every day. And so, so it, it, it might, is the question then, how do I get unstuck? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so would you be willing to take a look at how you stuck yourself? See, if we look yeah. at, if we look yeah. at, as, if, if we look at it as an external happening, if it's happened to us, then we render ourselves impotent, but we also offer ourselves an excuse. So if we look at what we can control, it's your response or it's my response to what's going on out there, right? So how, how is Mr. B unwittingly or unintentionally, how are you sticking yourself? Um, I, there was a point where I just lost motivation personally. And, um, you know, it was putting putting it, putting my, the, my betterment in the hands of someone else. So I depended on, let's say someone like an employer or something like that, when I needed to take the rings and I felt like I went back to stage one. Which know, was, so stage one was what? With no income, you know, zero to very little income. Um, struggling, not knowing where the next income is coming from and starting from scratch and building a business. And I know it's possible to build a business with zero capital, you know, and uh, how do I find the clients? How do I find the customers? Like I have a lot of great ideas and, and, and um, some of them manifested itself over the weekend. This space that I have currently is I've found myself since I've been coming in here. Um, it's been my, the, I, the, the, the creative juices are flowing. Now I just have to get it out there. And it's one of those Wait. deals where if you don't do it quick, someone else can come up with, it, with the ideas, you know? So are you, are you answering your own question then? Yeah. I, I, and, and many times I am aware that yeah, I got stuck in a rut and I'm getting over the, the little bitterness that I had depending on someone to, that I had trusted was to take me to that next level when I, I, I allowed myself to be vulnerable and say, hey, this is where I want to go. And that person said, okay, I can take you there. And they didn't. They kind of let me down. So there was that emotional thing where I felt like, okay, I guess I'm on my own. I guess I got to do this on my own. 
and yeah, there's fear. There's fear in, okay, how do I do this on my own? Because my success is really in my hands and I know that. And that's what I'm saying. I, there's things that we know. <laughs> we ask the question, we almost know the answer, but how do we get that forward motion? Is, I guess is my question. How, what, is, there, is there a word or a phrase or an affirmation do I, that I need to come up with to get forward motion? Juliana, I had did a little bit of a chatting, saying that her question that her question was answered. Can you help, Mr. B, Juliana? Thank you. Um, I think I get what you're saying, Mr. B, and I went through the same thing. And actually, talking to team helped me a lot. Um, so when the whole thing started, I lost my job. And then I believe for a week, I just stayed in my house. I didn't even go grocery shopping, it was. And then I started trying to see what I could do for myself because I couldn't just stay in bed, right? right. <laughs> for, for the rest of the thing, especially when my friend was like, you think this is gonna last a week like the government promised? That's not even close <laughs> to the end. And after that, they started ext extending quarantine and putting more measures in place and stuff. So I was like, okay, I need to do something for myself. Nobody's going to do it for me, right? I can get help and I can ask people like Tim and, and just keep looking and keep trying. Um, and it was, it was scary <laughs> at first. And it was like two weeks of what is going to happen and what am I going to do? But then it was like, I can do this and try this and that and the other, uh, the other, maybe get classes, even though that's not going to make, um, make income right now, that will help me. <laughs> and it's been good. <laughs> good for Thanks. You. Thanks, Juliana. Uh, Mr. B, what do you think about that? So my question to Juliana is, so how how would you deal with the right now? I mean, um, everything that I have in place is looking good. I'm excited. I'm, I'm actually, that part has me in a great place. And by the way, Tim, you and I had a conversation and, and I do have those things going. Um, it's like, uh, Tim asked me a question about, um, you know, how many streams do I have? And I started writing down these streams and what am I doing to, to get those streams going? So I, I have defined things that I'm doing to get those streams going. And I have, I realized that I actually have a lot of streams, but they're running dry to, to zero. So that, that kind of doesn't really help me with the right nows. And I'm still, I'm still in the positive spirits, but, it's the right now is that kind of you tend to fall into that little stressful moment, you know? So um, that's where we are right now. And as a, you know, as a, with a family of four, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's challenging. Anybody? Um, Thanks, I can tell you what I did for the right now. Cause I went back to, I didn't really want to get another one of these jobs but it's gonna help me right now and I need that. So I got one of those customer service jobs and it's actually letting me work from home. I do have a schedule, but I still have time to do things like this. Um, and I have income for right now, so I don't have to worry for my rent next month and things like that while everything gets in place. Gotcha, gotcha. That's, that's ballsy or eggsy i should say juliana <laughs> i really like that i mean that it sound to me like what you're saying is the objective is more important than the temporary pain yeah. and mr b i don't know there's there's a simple answer i do know that you do have it inside of you and that we can help you with this and uh i and i say we because i appreciate the way that people are, are uh, participating in this discussion, listening to you and uh, caring about you and what and what you're going through. Okay, 
I think you might be a little bit at attached to the betrayal that you had from the dis and the disappointment. And that might be occupying energy right now. Yeah. And if you want to free yourself up from that, learn, take away, don't, don't focus on, on that person being an asshole, focus on, uh, and, and hurting you. Although that might be a pattern in your life. If you've had betrayals over and over again, this might be a bruise on top of a bruise for you. If that isn't the case, that, and, and you're, you know, it's a temporary shock to your system, check to see if you do need to delegate going forward, if you've done the due diligence with that person. Because a person that says, I, yes, I, I'm, I'm going to do it, does it you, what you want to hear from, back from them is how they're going to do it. Yeah. And not just, not just accept that maybe in their excitement, they're, they're happy to, to be a part of what you're doing, but they really haven't figured out what they're, what they're going to do that uh, validates enough their, their justification for them being on the team. There's all sorts of dimensions here, but everybody, our own personalities are under siege. And, that, and the issues that are under siege are the things that we haven't resolved, that we need to resolve. So when we confront something that is uh, a block that appears to be coming up from the outside, again, check in to see if that person, to borrow what Amy has been talking about, everything is a gift. So if somebody treats me poorly, I react humanly to it, but then for me to move forward, I need to look at what my part, how, what's my part in it and what I'm here to learn. Here to learn. It's almost like what we, we started talking about today, and I'm getting really excited about this, just feeding off the energy of everybody, is what we said is no matter what is in front of us at any moment, we convert that. That's our objective, like Juliana did, not like Amy's talking about. And Mr. B, you're, 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 there's no question that you can do it. You just have to want it badly enough during this particular time. And if it doesn't come clearly, to ask the Julianas. Ask to reach out to the, to the rest of the, of the team. Thank you. Can I also add to what you're saying? Also read stories about people who have overcome betrayal. Like if that's the issue that's, that's got you, start reading a really, really good one is that there's it's one of the women on um, Shark Tank. Um, I'm blanking on her name. The short-haired one, but she Barbara was, Corcoran. Uh, Barbara Corcoran. Read her story. Um, you know, her, 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 and her boyfriend were in real estate together, and something went terribly wrong, and she was betrayed. And he basically, when she broke up with him, he basically was like, "You're not. You will never amount to anything without me." Wow. Yeah, well, she showed him. So read go, read her autobiography or her bio. Like, go <laughs> study, study people like that who have overcome betrayal and who have, and, and, and Tina just, Turner. Huh? <laughs> Tina Turner? Is that what I heard? Background. Uh, Tina Turner, Teddy oh. Pendergrass. Um, Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes should have been Teddy Pendergrass in the Blue Notes. He had all the talent. Harold stole the name and did him so wrong. It's an amazing story. And, and yeah. There's okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to I'm gonna trump that, though. Okay, oops, that, sorry that I used that swear word. Okay, <laughs> uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just say that ultimately it's about forgiveness, right? Mm. And it's about, it, it, I think we get, I get juice temporarily, temporarily from, from the strategy we're talking about, right? Someone has told me I can't make it, so I'm going to prove them wrong. But that dies out because it doesn't have it doesn't get much gas per gallon or miles per gallon, right? So I'm, I, I think it's a, it's really important that it, for me eventually to get to a place of forgiving or letting go, you know, forgiving myself, forgiving them, and beyond forgiveness, accepting that this is just again something that I'm not going to take on because it's not me, you know, it's not about me. Well, and but to that, your point. Go. Most of the, any of these stories where people have overcome betrayal, that's actually how they did it is through, there's the initial, like, I'm going to show you, but it's always, it's always forgiveness. Like that's literally anyone who's really done amazing things on the heels of betrayal. It's always forgiveness. But I think sometimes reading their biographies and reading their stories and seeing, wow, they were hurt just as badly as I am, or maybe even worse. If they can forgive that, I can forgive this kind of 
you know, so for me, just reading other people's stories and seeing that is the common, that is the common thread. Nobody's ever done anything amazing by hanging on to a grudge. This is Donald's in show. She's doing great. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't mean to do that. My pleasure. You know, we're all part of, we're all you. You are all us, right? So we're all and, one. And that's right. And so you're sharing, everybody that's speaking is, is, is really timely. And Andrea, what are you thinking? He's calling me. Turn her, find did, did Andrea turn her off? Or turn me off or what? I, oh, there she is. Okay. No. Um, I was looking for the unmute button, hit the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely agree that um, forgiveness is the key to everything. It, it frees your mind. You're not stuck in old patterns or bad feelings never get you anywhere. Andrea, you just touched my heart. I mean, the way you said that, I mean, just that your soul is leaping out. It's not even your words. It's just, wow. Thank you. Hey, Phil, one thing that <clears throat> Janice threw a question in there, and I think it, it, it harkens back to what you talked about with Mr. B. She said, <clears throat> any suggestions for pivoting to virtual platforms? If you know Janice, she has a lot of heart, but uh, she says here that she lacks the head component a bit. Um, to go to virtual platforms? Yeah, so um, I, I've i never really done a whole lot of online things and everybody is saying that we're shifting, that even when we do go back to being able to in, have in-person events and different things like that, that it's really smart and really a good idea to go virtual and to have you know, things online like um, programs, courses, um, websites, obviously, all of that kind of thing. Um, and it seems like a, a new world to me a little bit. So I didn't know if you had any suggestions uh, or input about pivoting completely. I mean, it's something I've never done before. So I am I have a coaching kind of thing set up. So they're helping with the technology of it. Uh, but it's just, it just feels so new, I guess, to me. Do you, do you have your own answer there? Um, what are you going to do? So I are you, think are you I, going to settle for that as a question? What are you going to do about the fact that you don't know? What to do? Learn, ask questions, um, put it out there. So I have, I've started to do things like Facebook Lives, which I never used to do, and more like these Zoom meetings, which are amazing. Uh, I guess to build, like establish a business though, it might just be a little bit of trial and error and putting things out there and see like I know Tim said fishing lines in the water, which I'm curious about that, but maybe just putting different things out there and see what sticks or what people are interested in. I'd love yeah. to do that. It, it, there's this, once again, delicate dance. Uh, think of rolling a wheelbarrow up a hill is, is a new venture and um, just, just trying to do too much at once versus trying new things and seeing what works. And that's the delicate dance of, of, you know, kind of keeping, never going away from what's working now, as long as it's working, but, but learning to juggle more balls and, and that going back to the dance, the tough part is, is when you, you know, you're juggling quite a few and to get anywhere in life, you must have new balls. <laughs> you're not going anywhere. You're not, if you, you got to put a new line in the water and, and, but you got to check the bait on the other lines and tend to all of the other stuff. And that's the hard part. And just, just back in the day, all I did was listed, sold real estate, 
took care of my family, invested, took care of my, you know, way focused in on those things. And over time, started buying rentals, started buying flippers, you know, uh, doing notes and, and, and all of those things grew. So, and, and it's best to stay close like a nucleus, if you will. Don't do this over here and this way over there. You know, it's, it's doing stuff within the different fishing lines of what you're doing, a book, a program, a new podcast, you know, things that, but don't do 16 things. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's where it's, and whatever you do, we can do it well. And I'm sorry, Phil. I don't want to tie show, but just kind of. What do you like? Come on, Timmy. I love the I love your patient and your patient way of explaining that and the the did you how you describe the balance again. That was that was cool, right? Yeah. Was, did, I would say that Timmy definitely has the goods in the woods. Skiing Tuesday, skiing Friday, there's a foot of snow. <laughs> Woohoo, it's late, May. Are you kidding me? What a life. <laughs> Oh my God, Timmy, you turn me on all the time, baby. That's so good. I love the energy. I just love it. Don't you all? I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. Janice. Um, by you, the way, did, did you want to look at Mr. Beast? Look at Mr. Beast. Hey, can smiling. I say something to that? Decades of work, you guys. Decades. You know, just a lot of this just didn't happen overnight. There was a, and and it's not done, as Phil could tell you. Last April, you know. We're never done, Timmy. We're never, we're never done. We're always evolving. Like we were talking about before, that's why it's important for us to not become complacent or settle for what we think we have as the formula of the moment. Yeah. So I hope that helped Janice and others. Cool. Um, what's, hey, Ellen, what's, Ellen, what's Ellen writing down? Ellen Smith is writing down. She, oh wait, it, I could see it from here. It's, when I, I when I leave the house and go to the store, it's two dozen <laughs> eggs. Oh no, go ahead. What are you What are you doing? Can you hear me? Yes. I was writing down about my thoughts about putting all the fishing lines in the water, Beautiful. and and some, you know, like Tim said, sometimes getting on the hamster wheel and you can't get off is a little bit tough. I have been able to sit down and assess all the skills that I currently have. And I've figured out that I have quite a few of them. So um, I'm being sort of forced in my own brain to change my mindset, jump completely into the water with no fear whatsoever, and go in all the directions, put all the fishing lines in the water. Um, you know, creating a new coaching website that has a blog, um, sending out postcards to, you know, the neighbors, um, you know, starting a new podcast called Superwoman and the Side Hustle, because I want to help yeah. people learn right. how to make money, especially now when people are struggling so much. There's lots of different things that you can do. If you can bake, bake some things and sell them to the neighbors. It doesn't have to be going from, you know, no money at all to an instant millionaire just means move the ball forward every day. But all these, I'm making uh, greeting cards, which is something I used to do when my, ch my children were little. Um, and I'm also creating a video blog. It's called Vital. And it's the creation of little videos that teach essential life sk skills to kids, things that they don't learn nice. in school. So I've been kind of trying to reinvent myself. It, with no fear, had to change my mindset to being just brave and just go for it and just go for, just go, just be unstoppable. Don't let anything get in the way. Just keep going, going, going. And if I do have six or seven lines in the water and I am sort of feeling exhausted some days, it's okay because I'm built that way. I'm able to handle all those things. I'm a single mom. I, all moms are, <laughs> all moms are superwoman, but I just feel like if I create that unstoppable mindset, there's really n no way that I can fail. And I love to help other people. So most of these things that I'm, I'm doing are always about helping others. Absolutely beautiful. Super. What's, yeah, that's exceptional. Thank you. And, and, and I, I would only just uh, tweak 
what you said, you're trying to be, you said, I'm trying to do this. You're not trying to do this, you are doing it. And, and it's amazing to hear you acknowledge yourself. So celebrate that and that energy that you're, the acknowledgement of self along with the lines in the water um, and, the, and the opportunities you're taking, in, that you're doing, that, that you're taking advantage of are evidence that you're in, mo in motion and you cannot, and you are unstoppable. It's interesting because you can hear she's, she's totally owning all of this. And then every now and then we catch ourselves in our old self, our old patterns, yeah. just saying, you can't, who the hell do you think you are? You know, and I, I was on this really high creative high for the last two weeks. And I woke up one morning about three or four days ago. And just went, this is all bullshit. You just, this is just, how could you even think this? So who the, you know, and just all this, it was like, whoa, what, where'd you come from? <laughs> you know, but the cool thing was, it was, it was a fleeting thought and the, all the positive antibodies that, that, you know, people have been doing this a while. So get the heck out of here. You know, we're, we're into this, dude, that ship sailed. <laughs> you know, that, that ship of, um, you're not worthy or the world's not ready for this. Forget that, you know, you just freaking play it. You just, you just, um, how can I put it? Who you are speaks so loudly. I can barely hear what you're saying. If you're just you, then, then the world, you know, takes it and you can course correct along the way. Expect the, what Timmy is talking about I, from my perspective is the recoil that comes from the transformation. When we make the change, there's a, t a test. And the old pattern that's enslaved us for a long time once is pissed off. It's like a government overthrow, you know? And, and the, the, so the energy and power is upset and it wants a piece of Tim. So it pulls us back in, you know, it tries to pull us back in. What Timmy did is recognize in that moment that that was a voice that is weakened, that has no longer has power. And so he can tolerate that, can, he can understand, it. he can even embrace it. For those of us who have been talking about embracing whatever's in the moment, he can even embrace it as evidence that he's changed. Right. And acknowledge it. Thank you for reminding me of who I once was. So that's, that was really nice, Tim, that was great. Uh, acknowledge the feeling, allow yourself to feel it, um, and ask, and invite love to solve it. When that comes up, acknowledge it, allow it. And, you know, it's there. It's not like it's not there, but, but question. And, and I love the government overthrow. What a, what a, it's like there's a new sheriff in town, you know, and this yeah. is the way things are going to be now. <laughs> so, yeah, and it's so hard because we always have that battle in your mind. If you guys haven't watched the movie Inside Out, watch that. And, and we should all watch that, you know, separately and have a Zoom call about the committee. Bring Phil back. That'd be amazing. <laughs> I'm going to wrangle us in a little here. Um, we, are, we are over our, our ass time with, uh, with Phil. But he said um, that he does have a little bit of time to, to squeak over the hour. However, if there's a a question, um, an insight, something that you'd like to share. Um, you know, I, I, I find so many times of myself having to, to, or not having to, but quieting that voice or quieting that question of, of oh, I, and I have to ignore that, you know, like Tim said, um, that hesitation. And, and oftentimes, um, you know, your question is not just your question. A lot of times it's uh, the question that so many other people on the on the call have as well. So um, if there's any other uh, insights, thoughts, I'd love for anyone to unmute and kind of take the floor. And, and before, before Amy goes, and thanks, Hector, I, I'm, I'm open. I mean, I'm, I've got time. So uh, I, I'm, I know you guys are, are probably more yeah, pressed. I was... If, if um, like, we're, we're now officially into Phil's and my coaching call time. And I'll, I'll want to talk to you about, about a half an hour, Phil. But sure. um, yeah, I'd much rather share this time. So, yeah, you're you're just such a treasure, you know. So. 
Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate it. I'm, Amy, I'm, did I'm you so have something to say? To be here. Yeah, Amy's got it. Oh, I wanted to piggyback onto what Tim was saying. And yes, Bill, you've been a treasure. This is amazing. Thank you. <laughs> but I wanted to piggyback when Tim was saying about this like constant battle or that sometimes when this negative comes up and there's an old fable, which is um, where the kid asks his grandfather, he goes, it's like there's two wolves fighting inside of me, right? There's the the negative one that always wants to bring me down. And then there's the positive one that always wants to lift me up. Um, and, and then he asked the, the grandfather, because I don't, I don't know which wolf inside of me is going to win. And the grandfather says, well, it's easy. It's whichever one you feed. And so when those negative thoughts come up that are battling, you know, like the, the overthrowing of the governor, I always just stop and remember that, like, I don't have to feed that wolf. When you start thinking the negative thoughts and you start playing into that, you're feeding that wolf versus when you're leaning into your faith, you're trusting that everything's going to work out, you're asking, how can this be to my benefit? Then you're feeding this wolf. And it's, and it's a choice. And we all get caught up in this, right? Because it comes barking and, and we start giving it. And then we realize, wait a minute, I don't want to feed that wolf. <laughs> so it's just one of my favorite stories when you talked about that battle that we have a lot more control over it than we realize but what happens is we unconsciously will feed whichever one is barking at us instead of consciously saying no starving this one feeding that one brilliant beautiful yeah what do you all think about that That's a topic, that's a real deep-seated issue for all human beings. And that's a topic for us to, to get in, in more deeply if we want to at some point. Yeah. The, the, you know, Amy gave us the answer. And then it, as uh, Mr. B would say, but how do we get there? Sterling, right. did you want to hop in? Uh, yeah. So I guess the way I think of that, um, I'll shoot the sandwich whatever you feed the most. For me, it's a lot to do with uh, momentum. So I've, I've put a lot more momentum into the positive things in my life. Um, and like Tim was saying, you'll wake up and then just get hit one day with like, why am I even trying? Um, Andrew, or not Andrew, uh, Napoleon Hill's Outwitting the Devil. He talks about uh, like negative energy and positive energy. It's like they're both always there. Uh, that's that's kind of how I just think about those thoughts is this is negative energy when I feed that uh, it just pulls me stronger to that negative side and just uh, use that moment to push through that negative so that's that's all I got thanks Bill. thanks Tim. thanks Hector. Sterling do you how do you do how do you push through when you say just push through so, what do you say or what do you do to push through um, my biggest thing is like my why. I don't think I always talk about this, but um, it's made the biggest impact on me um, as, as far back as I can remember. Um, so I have a little notebook I keep in my truck, and it's got uh, my vision plan in it. It's got um, like uh, my 90 year old, like where I'm sitting, or where I want to be when I'm 90 with my kids, where like, uh, like what I'm doing all this for so like when i'm absolutely like depressed or anything or just having that thought um i just look i've been looking back to that lately and then kind of on the affirmation side i've been in the habit of reading it um, and i also have another thing it's kind of like a book like a biography autobiography and it's not like a full book um, it's just kind of chapters in my life and so i read that daily uh to keep me focused on what i'm doing and honestly, like, like, even with the COVID stuff, I didn't get rocked too bad by it. Um, I got kind of lucky with that. Um, yeah, things have been decent. So, that's uh, so. just saying in the affirmation side of you. I like that you, you know, that you have these um, go tos that you that you trust. That are obviously like, uh, like wild cards that you can use because you believe in them. And when you're struggling, you can pull those out and play them because 
they're tried and true and you and you place more belief in them in that moment than you do in the fear or the doubt and maybe that i mean that reminds me that's i think it's important for us to have some of those wild cards that we can play that we that are go-to's that we can use so thank you I think, uh, it, and and i'm really anxious i think i read out wedding the devil a, a while back and i want to read it again <clears throat> but it, if I, if i'm not mistaken it it speaks to the time wasters we do and how we it's just the little things that that oh i'll just take a little time here oh i'll just take a little time there and then you tire yourself you go over time and oh it's okay and then i'll just and then i'll just and then i'll just and we're down the road of bad habits versus just starting just you know that's why uh, what am i gonna do today the list is so good so you have something you're, you're you know so you so you have tools to outwit the devil you know that that would take you into that apathetic place of just for me and i'm curious what it is for others it's it's a happy place like like you know how is my sports team oh, never mind that one now or you know what i mean just just places we go or things we do to waste time rather than doing the stuff we don't want to do but if we do it it makes all the freaking difference so anxious yeah who 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 hasn't spoken a number of people have not spoken um that are willing to share give us something that you're thinking about um and something that you want to take away from here or want to get, leave us with that's even better um i'm looking at some of the people uh, like uh, rob and mike and it looks like kayla and jessica i'm looking at this part of the screen and uh therese um theresa and um I'm curious if anybody got some good insights from phil or 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 lingering questions or just ahas uh, i got an aha from we don't have the answers for tomorrow by doing what we did yesterday mm. even if it worked yesterday it's brilliant thanks rob and you know i, I remember saying that but here's part of the, here, the reason why I want to emphasize that is not because I, I had this wonderful piece of wisdom. I think it is smart, right? But I, but I don't take, I don't take um, credit for that. I feel like those words came out of me in this moment um, through the source of this group, this, you know, the team. We're producing the collective wisdom, sharing the collective wisdom, sharing the, the collective honesty, sharing the collective difficulties, the challenges we have. And that's, and I feel, when I say that, I feel tingly inside saying it. So that's my visceral way of, of validating what I just got through saying spontaneously. And thank you for, for you know, uh, bringing that up right now, Rob. Thank you for inspiring that. That's a, that's a, that is a huge point that um, I kind of alluded to earlier. What made me successful in my real estate days, you know, I was the bull in the china shop. I was the hurricane. I was the get shit done person. Um, no longer serves me well. Um, I'm still of a mind to do things and phil can tell you i've got lots of things that are on the horizon but now i feel a lot more in a flow state allowing you know what's going to happen and and i lay out my day but it's nowhere near as rigid as it once was and my kpis used to be numbers now it's more of how do i want to show up you know of, of how i know i'm in state Timmy, that's great. And I, you know, one of the things that, that I, I want to say about um, the old you, let's say, I mean, there's always, there's an old me, or there, there's an old piece of us or a used to be piece of us. I, I think it's important every now and then to uh, be grateful, to go back to that old pattern, because that old pat pattern is sponsored our getting here right now. And because it might have been painful or it looks, it looks a little odd in comparison, 
nevertheless, it, when we were going through the way, when you were being the real estate guy and you were, you know, balls to the wall, you were brilliant for that per period of time. And so occasionally it's not, it's not that we shed something that is no longer that we should criticize, right? It's mm -hmm. that we've transformed ourselves using that previous iteration of who we are. And that needs to be celebrated as well. We need to be grateful for that part of us. Yeah, it's interesting. I was on a GoBundance call the other morning and I went over my one sheet and I got done with it. And I'm so proud, honestly, of the evolution I've taken to, mm. you know, just now I'm on my goals is a lot of time in silence, just being, which for me is, you know, I used to, you guys know that I can't meditate. My mind's too busy. So, um, he said, when I got all done, uh, Timmy, I want to call you out as a leader. You've gone so far, but I'm not sure you're still giving us the gifts of helping us with the things we need to do to get up that first mountain. And that's why early in this call, I talked about the ones who are too heart centered who are so loving and mm. feeling and need to have that. Christopher Lockhead would call it, put a moose on the hood. <laughs> and back in the day, I put a lot of moose on the hood. You know, uh, how many, how many um, calls am I gonna make? How many contacts will lead to this many listing appointments, which will lead to this many sales. And all I focused on was that. And those are the, you know, those are the, what can you do headwise? And this is for all of you, um, who may be a bit in your heart, what can you do headwise to um, make shit happen? <laughs> you know, and that's the, you, you gotta have that piece. So that's my thoughts. Mm -hmm. Are there any other last questions, thoughts, ideas, any, any kind of last responses here? Um, Phil has actually been a, uh, a master class. He's been on, on a few of our, our, our calls. I think this is our first public one that we've done with Phil. The, the rest of them have been uh, for our team and for our, our master classes, which are exclusively for our contributor club members. Um, I have to thank some of them who are on the call. Juliana, Andrea, Ellen, Joe, Kala, Sterling, all of you guys who for just your, your continuous support. Um, those of you guys who don't know what that is, the Contributor Club is a it's a it's a membership, and part of that membership, um, what you get is access to coaching with people such as Phil, with uh, other One Life guides and experts. We have close to thirty different coaches that our our members get access to. Uh, they get early access to all of our journals, and uh, we host live master classes, which are, are very similar to these, uh, oftentimes a little more intimate with uh, with high level guides like Kiyosaki and Jeff Hoffman and Phil Tal and. So um, if you guys are, are not um, in the Contributor Club and you want more info, just, uh, just put info in the chat or send me a private message and um, I'll get you info for that as well. Um, any other last thoughts, questions? Phil, I mean, is there anything that you, that you think that we haven't touched on that you want to get in before we, we wrap up today? How about, um, are we going to wrap up at the halfway, at the half an yeah. hour, about yeah, seven minutes? I put on there. So let me hear, let me, I'll wrap it up at the end, but let me hear it from somebody else. Thanks, Hector. Thanks again for being such a great uh, coordinator here, facilitator. Appreciate it. I have some. Joe, go ahead. So uh, this echoes a lot of what other people had said, but it, maybe it's in my own words or my own thoughts that, um, and I'm sorry to look down, but I'm reading this, that allowing and embracing the confusion and the struggle and uh, while we're learning and using it to repurpose and build momentum from within is something that we can get from this time and from, from uh, putting the work in right now. Joe, thank you very much for that. And, and own that mm -hmm. as your, um, it's an affirmation of Joe Price, it's, it, that's, that's who you are. So you're making a statement as you read something that's valuable to share with the rest of us. Thank you. Someone who hasn't spoken yet? I, 
I have uh, a question for someone who hasn't spoken on their thoughts. Phil, gotcha. what would your today self tell your 20 year old self that was going through what we're going through now? You know, that's a, that's a great, nobody's asked me that question. And I'm, I'm going to tell you my honest, spontaneous reaction. This is my, I might tell my 20, 20 year old, Hey, you're going to be fine. You're going to, you're going to, you'll be fine. I want you to go through whatever you need to go through to get there. I'm with you. Right. So I don't need to, there's nothing you need to change about anything that you're doing. Uh, whether you're doing well or not doing well, um, I'm with you. I got you. We're together. It's beautiful. Cool. Well, does anybody have any last questions for Phil wraps it up? What were you going to say, Phil? So look, look, this is to me, this is the spiritual quality of this meeting to me. I'm blessed. There's no question about it. Thank you for inviting me. Um, and uh, thank you for the honor of being a part of this cohort that has, has formed in this moment of time. Okay. I, I have a way that I pay attention to that I alluded to before, and that is I, I can feel the presence of everybody in, in, in a way that I can't exactly put into words. But I know that it, there exists in this cohort, in this moment of time, a purpose that we're here. You know, we're here for a purpose, right? A, a deeper purpose. The collective, the, what, I, what I experience as the, as the collective purpose is that we're light workers in, um, who are here to um, enhance each other, to help each other go out from here and continue to impact the world with the best person that we are and help each other, connect with each other in, in between, in whatever way we need to do that, do. And it, I would like everybody to pledge to yourself something that you want to do for this group and something you want to do for um, the next person that is in front of you uh, as you leave the call so that we, we capture the essence of this. I mean, I, there's, it doesn't need to be a concluding statement about what we've learned. There just need to be a kind of a joyous celebration of the fact that we're together. And if we can take that energy, I promise to do that, take this energy to the next moment. Uh, that, and to, to remind myself of, of reflect upon the, the, the moment we've shared today then we will continue to do what we came to do and it will not become a one night stand or one day stand or something right or one morning stand right <laughs> so love you guys and thanks again i mean it it just bring me back you know I, i'd love to be back anytime okay thanks, thanks everybody so much, appreciate it. i uh i appreciate you and, and i'm sure that everybody can speak for for that um you know, Phil, I, I don't know. Is is there a place that people are you? I don't know that I've seen you on social media. Do you, are you active on on the on the interweb or the book of faces? Or is there a place that people can stay connected or follow up with you if they if they wanted to? Is that Hector speaking? I can't see. Is that Hector? Yes, that's me. And okay. Well, there's there you are with your baby, and that's so cool. So Hector, I am I I, I refuse to be on. Um, I, I know social I, media so but I it's not it, and part of it is just that the part of me that wants to be an alien uh you know kind of a rebellious alien and part of me just doesn't find that sentiment enough for me but I'm you know you can reach me through you or, yeah. or Timmy or Join whatever the I mean, right, club. right right whatever yeah yeah by the way you guys in our contributor club we've had members oh. get calls with Phil so so you know he's the kind of piece people that uh our higher level members are set up with calls with to and this helps us throw down the rope to get our one life roadmap teachings into those we most want to serve so we find this a a really valuable thing that we can help you crush all the things we talked about today while you help us um, you know, create a bridge, if you will, helping those that never get any kind of information like this, find their fulfillment triangle, learn the core four. Think about that, you guys. Think about the movement we have 
the ability to make. And it takes one contributors helping us grow our sustainability there. And two, people going through our One Life Roadmap Guide certification, learning our tools, um, taking them to serve your community your way. Do you care about prisons? Um, uh, kids just getting out of school, uh, the sober community. Uh, would you like to help through Rotary, big brothers, big sisters? We want the One Life Roadmap teachings everywhere. Our mission is to make it cool to care about one's life. And by supporting One Life, you can help us do that. So Phil Toll, thank you so much. Take us home, Hector. I don't think there needs to be anything else. Catch us next week, every Monday, same time, 9 a.m. If you're not on, on, uh, on the list, go to onelifefullylive.org slash join and you can get on the list. Nice Talk job, you guys. Thank you very hey, much, Phil. everybody. Love you. Uh, Thanks. Um, FaceTime me, Phil. And Joe, yeah, well, I'll talk to you in...